Sound off why they say they were silenced at tonight's school board meeting. An exclusive interview here from the woman who helped an assault victim after she jumped off an apartment building. Plus, unique insight. One of the few contact tracers left in North Dakota takes us through a day on the job. Valley News Live at 10 starts right now. Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. Watch out for ice in the morning as your commute could be a dicey one. Let's head straight over to Hutch for a look at the changes coming for some of us overnight. Hutch? If you've been out on a stroll walking the dog this evening in Moorhead or Fargo, not surprising that a flake has shown up already as we are seeing a little bit of activity showing up in the clouds on the radar. Now it's not reaching the ground everywhere you see blue here, but it's the first indications that things are about to change. Cass County, Barnes County and points north into Nelson and Grand Forks County seeing some flurry activity. Notice temperatures are above freezing here, but well, we can certainly see snowflakes with temperatures just above freezing and below freezing. Now here's what our concerns are. Some of this moisture with gusty winds from the south at 30, bringing warmer air throughout the overnight hours could be in the form of liquid precipitation. So rain and areas where the ground is freezing could see freezing rain for a very slippery morning commute. Andrea will have details in hour by hour style on what you can expect in your backyard, but the best chance of any of this nonsense tonight from the Red River and points east details in a moment. All right, thanks Hutch. New at 10 tonight, tension at the West Fargo School Board meeting. A group of parents and school staff members say they came out to express concerns about the return to learn plan following the Thanksgiving holiday, but we're told they're not able to speak. Valley News Team's Katie Opperly joins us in the studio after speaking with the group. Katie? Andrea, the group called CARE, or Community Alliance for Research and Engagement, wants their voices to be heard. Several members, including parents, school staff, and including parents and school staff, came out to the board meeting to address concerns about returning to the classroom following Thanksgiving, given the current COVID-19 rates for the region. When the members went to sign up to speak, they were turned away and sought out Valley News Live for help. They are pleading with school leaders to wait to send students back to the classroom following the holidays for the safety of students, staff, and the community. I just think four days is just crazy around the holidays. Just wait till we come back after Christmas break, even maybe two weeks after break, just to make sure that we get, you know, we don't have any more spikes because we can't, our system, our medical system can't handle it. The guidelines to participate at the school board meeting do say that to speak about a subject, it must be a topic already on the agenda. And the topic of the return to learn plan was not on tonight's agenda. Superintendent Beth Sleddy did address that several families and staff members have come forward to express COVID related concerns. Superintendent Sleddy says they do take these comments into consideration, going on to say there will be a meeting tomorrow with health leaders and their committee where they will discuss returning to the classroom after Thanksgiving break. Andrea. All right, thanks, Katie. The CARE group is still hoping to speak about their concerns at the next school board meeting. Also tonight, West Fargo Public Schools moved forward with a revised budget for this school year. The total budget is changing by more than $10 million. A large factor into why money is being moved around is because of the COVID pandemic. Increased supplies for day-to-day -day operations like more cleaning, demand for technology because of distance and hybrid learning, as well as the need for more staffing accounts for the largest percentage of the revised Revised budget. Substitutes and temp salaries account for $1.6 million on their own. The intention is, is to bring on um, as many uh, educators as we can safely into our buildings to provide um, supports as teachers are out on quarantine or out sick with COVID. He goes on to say that none of this money will be pulled from taxpayers. The funds are pulled from the state aid and from federal grants. The school board voted unanimously to approve the multi-million dollar budget revisions. Also new at 10, one person has died in a crash between a pickup and a semi in Becker County. It happened around 3.30 this afternoon near Lake Park. Investigators say the 75-year-old driver of the pickup was heading northbound, stopped, and was waiting to cross Highway 10. When he began crossing, he was hit by the eastbound semi. The victim's name has not been released yet, but authorities say he was from Lake Park. The semi-driver, 46-year-old Dwayne Klinkner, from Staples, Minnesota, was not hurt. 
One woman says she was forced to jump off a roof while another fled on foot after Moorhead police say they were both stabbed in the eyes and head late last night. The man police say started it all. 18-year-old Ashton Bellafuel is now behind bars, charged with second-degree attempted murder and three counts of assault. It happened just after 7 Thursday night in the 1900 block of 18th Avenue South. A neighbor tells us she was the first to call 911, saying the nightmare unfolded right in front of her eyes. She was covered in blood. Her eyelid was cut open. Um, was she saying anything? Yeah, she was screaming, help me, and just help me pretty much the whole time. And I was in complete shock. Just It was like a zombie ran at me. Police say the woman who jumped from the roof is still in the hospital and has since undergone two major surgeries. If convicted, Bella Fuel could face more than 50 years in prison. Last week, North and South Dakota saw the most daily new COVID cases per capita of any other states. The Dakotas are also among the worst in the country for per capita deaths and hospitalizations. Contact tracing is all but eliminated in North Dakota. There are just too many cases. One of the few contact tracers left gave us this perspective on what her job is like. It's pretty stressful. You know, there's good days and bad days. It's a little bit disheartening to see how the cases continue to increase and unfortunately we aren't quite seeing the behavior change that we would hope for. I think that people need to remember that every one of these numbers is a person and somebody loves that person and they're grieving and mourning for them. Ashley Nelson says her team will stay true to their focus trying to stop the spread. The state of Minnesota has launched an app to let you know if you've been exposed to COVID-19. This comes seven months after North Dakota's app, Care 19, launched back in April. Governor Tim Walz says he's begging residents to download the free app. You can also turn on exposure notifications by going into your phone's settings and clicking on Turn On Exposure Notifications. Essentia Health is making it easier for you to schedule a COVID-19 test. It has launched patient-initiated testing rather than having patients wait to be referred to get a test. For information on how you can access it, log on to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story. The North Dakota State Emergency Commission has approved another $35 million in CARES Act reallocations. Of the $1.25 billion North Dakota was given, $221 million has been moved so far. If today's changes are approved on December 3rd, that will go up to $256 million. $15 million of that is going to the Department of Health to help with staffing shortages. But even Burgum's cabinet doesn't think it will solve the problem. It is a band-aid, but I think what we're trying to do is give the state some understanding of the increased cost due to contract staffing for COVID. 20% of the money the state was given has gone unspent. Much of that came from the Bank of North Dakota. They offered loans and other financial assistance, but they say demand was lower than expected. As coronavirus kills more than 1,000 Americans every day, new data is offering a glimmer of hope in the struggle to contain the pandemic. Valley News Live's Washington reporter Kyle Madura looks into new promise for a vaccine and the path ahead. A safety check is pending, and we still don't know exactly how much protection they offer. But recent results suggest drugs from Pfizer and Moderna may be the vaccines the world's been waiting for. The results from these clinical trials are frankly stunning. U.S. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar says emergency approvals could get a dose of protection to the most vulnerable next month. But he doesn't expect vaccines to be widely available until the spring. In the meantime, he says it's on everyone to protect themselves and each other. The evidence is clear. Distancing and masks work. Make it through this Thanksgiving so that you can all be together and have an excellent Thanksgiving next year. Public health experts like Harvard's Michael Minna welcome the results, calling them extremely encouraging. But he says simply waiting for a vaccine could cost countless American lives in the war against the virus. We have tools. These are our weapons right now. Minna began calling for deploying cheap, widespread, daily rapid tests back in the late spring. He says what began as theory is now backed up by data but argues leaders are allowing bureaucratic red tape to tie their hands when it comes to getting tests into every home. There are so many ways to get around the system if the system is literally causing your constituents to die. 
So we just have to start acting. These tests could have allowed Thanksgiving to happen normally. He says there's still time to save Christmas, but that will require rapid action from the president, Congress, and states. In Washington, Kyle Madura, Valley News Live. There are 10 more vaccines in the development pipeline getting closer to releasing early results. Once drugs are approved, distributing them across the country will be its own monumental challenge. Joe Biden has been informed that the Trump administration is ready to begin the formal transition process. A letter from the General Services Administration is the first step the administration has taken to acknowledge President Donald Trump's defeat. The move will allow agency officials to coordinate with the incoming Biden team and provide millions in government funds for the transition. President Trump said in a tweet that he is directing his team to cooperate, but is vowing to keep up the fight. Meanwhile, Twitter is preparing to support the transition of the White House institutional Twitter accounts. The social media platform says they are actively preparing to change the POTUS, FLOTUS and press secretary accounts, just as they did in 2017. They say the process is being done in close consultation with the National Archives and Records Administration. The NARA has historically played a role in appropriately preserving records following administration transitions. Valley News Live has teamed up with the Great Plains Food Bank for a virtual food drive. All donations will stay right here in the community to help our neighbors in need. To find out more, you can download our free VNL News app, look for the virtual food drive, and then click to donate. Later on Valley News Live at 10, one carrier is making mental health a priority. Up next, the three-digit hotline that's coming at a critical time. Breezy and quiet weather today, and a capper was this gorgeous setting sun captured by our Valley Sky Cam. We have changes showing up on the radar flakes already. Yeah, I've seen a couple. Your forecast is next.